Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Talks. I'm your host, Andrew Kistner, uh, for the Oxford Center Talks. Today's podcast is going to be a little bit different. Um, so uh, I met with Alicia actually just before this. We just kind of continued this on. I wanted to do an in-depth look um, at uh, intensive uh, physical therapy, also uh, Therasuit physical therapy. Um, it's a program that we have at the Oxford Center that uh, people take huge advantage of, and it made a huge difference in my daughter's life, Gracie. Um, it gave her the ability to walk, something we thought that would never happen, uh, to be honest, until we came to Oxford and saw this program that we had never seen before. <laughs> and the nurses who do our discovery sessions really wanted a video going, uh, diving into really the ins and outs of uh, Therasuit and intensive physical therapy. So wanted to continue our conversation with Alicia, um, who is our Director of Clinical Services, a Doctorate of Physical Therapy, and runs this program. She is Therasuit certified and trained in, in all that and kind of get, again, a, a, a deep look into that. So I'm gonna kind of turn it over to you to first tell me um, a little bit about the basis of the program. Um, you know, why is it necessary? Mm -hmm. Kind of a little bit about what we talked in the last podcast, mm -hmm. but kind of go over that again. Um, yeah, so the, the intensive physical therapy that we do here, we use the TheraSuit method. Um, you know, depending on the person, we kind of change it a little bit or adjust as needed, but um, background to that is, is insurance covers very little physical therapy. Yep. Um, for all of our kiddos, for all of our adults that have these motor dysfunctions, motor challenges, can't live their day-to-day -day life, they're given 30 visits a year. They're right. given 60 <laughs> visits a year. Yep. It is such a disservice um, to those that need the help. Right. Um, so if you are only given 30 visits a year, you don't use them all at once no. <laughs> because if something happens later in the year or you know your injury is eh, you know you're just gonna live with it for a little while because you only get 30. Yep. Um, so the one time a week or two times a week for 45 minutes to an hour don't do what you need them to do. Right. Um, they're just not enough. Right. So by the time you get started into a 45 minute session you get started into an hour session you're pretty much ending your session. Like you're just getting started. You're just getting your momentum going. You're just getting used to the flow, and then your session's over. Three days later, you get to come back and start over again. Right. Um, you see a lot of the roller coaster ride where you have good benefit from that one hour, but then it, the carryover falls really quickly, and then you get to start over again. It takes much longer to do therapy that way, just because you don't have that consistency. You don't have the repetition. You don't have that intensive service. Um, and I said a little bit in the last one, you know, no athlete, no person who's trying to adjust their mechanics to get to that next skill level set ever works out one time a week for 45 minutes. Right. You don't hear it, you yeah. know, you don't train for a marathon that way. You don't train to swim laps that way. You don't train to do any, you don't learn to play basketball that way. You don't learn soccer that way. Like it just, it doesn't work. Um, so the, the whole premise of this intensive physical therapy or the TheraSuit method is to get that intensity, to get that repetition, to get to those milestones that we need to get to by giving the, the person, the kid, the adult, the time they need to do it. Right. Um, a high level athlete, a high level anyone, they will train for multiple hours a day, every single day to make sure that they are getting the carryover, they're getting the benefit, they're getting that repetition that they need to get those neuroplastic, neuroplasticity and the brain mapping to right. make the actual changes, to make their muscles stronger, to get to that next level. Yeah. Um, so we kind of took that whole idea, that whole intensive training idea, I know I said a little bit on the last one, but kids, kids are meant to move. Yeah. Um, they want to move, they want to engage. So three hours sounds like a long time, but for a young adult or a kid or someone who just wants to get better, three hours goes by so fast in it these does. sessions. We did four rounds of it yes. and every time we're like, wow, that, that just blew by. Even blew every by. day would blow by. Yes. Uh, it, it really is not, it's not that bad. It no. isn't at all. And so three hours a day, five days a week, four to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks, it's a very short time, actually. Um, those three hours go by fast. Those five days a week go fast. And before you know it, your entire intensive is over and you're like, whoa, where'd it go? Right. Um, and, you know, that first week is a little bit more challenging. Like you said sure. with Gracie, you know, the body has to get used to that higher level energy. It has to get used to 
you know, producing all of that mechanisms inside, you know, all of the changes that happened within that first week, because we do a lot of strengthening in that first week. We do a lot of addressing of reflexes that are integrated right. We'll get into a little bit more of that in a little bit, but that first week, it's a lot. Um, it is. But then we take all of that that we learned in the first week and we start to build function. So it just goes by so fast. Yep, um, absolutely. And, and it, it was is the, really cool. The neat thing is when we would, because we were from Toledo, mm -hmm. so we would uh, do eight weeks here and mm -hmm. then we'd go back home to her therapist, physical therapist in Toledo. Just her mind was blown every yes. time. Um, I remember the first round that we did, after we were done, we had to buy new pants mm -hmm. for Gracie because she had gained so much muscle in yep. her legs from three hours a day, five days a week for eight weeks. Yep. Uh, but that amazing. muscle that through normal development would have developed by just being active throughout right. the day. Yep. Yeah. But she couldn't do those things. But she couldn't do them. We had to get um, them. Yep. And we had to incorporate the therapy to help her to get to that next level. Um, and so, you know, we talked a little bit about the cerebral palsy diagnosis. This intensive method was developed pr primarily for those with a cerebral palsy. Uh, the TheraSuit was designed for yeah. that diagnosis in particular. We kind of take it and use it for all sorts of diagnoses now, but the main premise of that intensive therapy, that TheraSuit therapy was for cerebral palsy. Awesome. So I know one question I have, and then we'll get into the TheraSuit, because <clears throat> a lot of people haven't seen that. I had mm -hmm. never seen it. Yeah. Didn't know it existed, much less the intensive side of it, but does, is everyone, um, do they, ha is intensive therapy suit therapy or vice versa? Or are those kind of two different things incorporated together? How does that work? Tell me about relation. Um, so it's two separate things. Okay. So we incorporate for those that are appropriate. So there are a lot of um, a lot of things that we got to check first before I can put someone into the TheraSuit. So there's okay. some things that would not allow you to use the TheraSuit, but you can definitely still do an intensive. Got it. Um, so the TheraSuit is a, a piece of the intensive session. Okay. Just like using the UEU, the Universal Exercise Unit, that is a piece of the intensive session. Um, so the whole three hours is not spent in the TheraSuit. Okay. Every single day, for some, we get in the suit. We don't get in the suit every single day for right. others. So the suit is a component of the intensive. Perfect. So some people, um, depending on the condition or what their goals are and trying to accomplish, they may just do intensive without TheraSuit. Yep. Um, but if you're going to do TheraSuit, you're in intensive. You're in an intensive. Because you can't set up a TheraSuit <laughs> without doing an intensive. No. Therapy. Yeah, by the time we would get the suit on, right. we would have maybe five minutes in it <laughs> yes. to get back out of it. Those are always the funnest times, though. I've got photos mm -hmm. of Grace, you know, getting put in her suit and standing on her therapist's head, uh, like one foot just standing on her head because uh, mm -hmm. she's doing the legs and he, it, it's it is intensive just getting in the suit. Yep. Um, I bet most therapists sweat just yes. putting a suit on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's dive in a little bit to the suit. I know you brought a suit here and kind of some of the components that we use. Mm -hmm. Again, this video is really for those interested in wanting more information on TheraSuit, yep. uh, specifically uh, in intensive physical therapy. So let's get into it. Show us the suit and how kind of it works and functions. Yeah. So like I said, you know, the intensive itself, the TheraSuit is just a component of it. Right. So we have to prepare the body in order to get into the TheraSuit okay. first. Um, so if you have that severe spasticity, you have either the hypotonia, some of those other comorbidities with your diagnosis, we have to prepare you to have the best outcome in the suit possible. Okay. So if you have a specificity, we really need to start with like the warm up. So we use hot packs, we use stretching, we use gentle motion. We start in the UEU working on single muscle group strengthening. Um, okay. So we really start um, outside of the suit first, so that way you have the best success once you get into the suit. That makes perfect um, sense. Yeah. Just like uh, do, warming up. Right. You know, it's for a, whatever yes. you're gonna do. Yep. You don't just. You don't Put just your, go. Your, um, your shoes on and, and run a marathon. Because the TheraSuit is a workout. Just <laughs> is, standing in, one. In, the th in the suit is a workout. Yes. Um, so the body really needs to be ready to tolerate that workout. Okay. Um, How long is that? Like an hour or? Yeah, and it depends. Okay. Um, everything that I'm going to talk about is a it depends side right. of it, which is why it takes someone who can clinically process through all of this in order to Got do it. it the right way. Um, because every case is different. Every case needs to be adjusted very particularly to that to that patient okay. in order for them to get the best outcomes. Makes sense. So it's general principles and then we kind of modify and tweak as needed okay. in order to, to have a good session. Um, so yeah, so we use all of the tools. Um, so we start a lot with the stretching, the mobilization, getting the joints loosened up. You know, if you have those contractures, you have scoliosis, the suit's not going to be great. Um, 
there are certain characteristics that you, you can't even get into the suit, so we gotta address those first. Um, you know, a lot of times we ask for hip x-rays just because if the hips aren't stable, ah. we don't wanna put all this external force on them. Right. Um, that's not good. No. <laughs> just not good. Um, so we really start a lot on the core. The core okay. is the core is our biggest piece to coordination. It's our biggest piece to balance. Being able to be stable allows you to then use your extremities. Um, so you see so many kids that have the very weak core. Right. They can't use a fork because right. they can't coordinate their arm on top of a loose body in order to stab <laughs> something with precision. Right. Stabbing those little things takes a lot of precision. And so until you have the core strength to sit upright, you can't use your extremities functionally. Right. And your brain is always making these calculations. Correct. In, in fractions of a tenth of a second. Correct. Um, to, to extend your arm, your, your, your brain yes. is moving weight mm -hmm. around in order to make that, that work. Correct, and so unless you know how to move your weight around and you have that counterbalance activation, you have all of those pieces working, your arm's gonna go, your whole body's gonna go. Right. Like you, <laughs> you just don't have, you don't have what you need. So right. we have to have all of those pieces and work on all of those pieces together. Um, so we do a lot of core. Um, okay. We look at a lot of the reflexes. So many times as a kiddo progresses through milestones, they they start to integrate their reflexes. Okay. So then that means we're starting to use those reflexes in a functional pattern um, as opposed to it being maladaptive. Um, so for instance, when a baby is wiggling its way out of the birthing canal, there's a reflex along the spine that when triggered as it's moving down the birthing canal helps it wiggle side to side. Um, so if that, and that reflex shouldn't last much longer than after birthing because right. it's no longer needed. At that point, it's maladaptive. <laughs> So we have kiddos that are sitting in a chair and they're like, they can't sit still because that backrest of the chair is triggering, <laughs> triggering that Doesn't reflex. My mind. Um, so putting the suit on isn't going to help them quite yet because their back is just going to be like triggering that reflex right. side to side. So you're going to get more of this extraneous movement and you're gonna be like, what is going on? But it's because some of those reflex are, right. are firing when they shouldn't be. Um, there's quite a few in the feet that if you're not up and walking, some of the Babinski and other reflexes in the feet stay present longer than they really should. Yeah. Um, so then your toes start flaring as you walk. Um, it's very, very difficult to walk when your toes are up in the air. Right. Um, uh, toes, your toes are important. They are. <laughs> toes are very important to balance. They really should be gripping the ground. They should be helping you right. with your proprioceptive, with your input onto where, where you're at in space. Yeah. Your feet. Your feet start that. Um, and so, you know, we have to reintegrate some of those reflexes. We have to work from the brainstem um, and see if we can get those reflexes working in the proper patterns for the right age range. Got it. Um, so we do a lot of that work first. And a lot of that, again, comes from the core. Right. The core is stronger. The body then knows where it's at. It doesn't need to rely on those reflexes to move. It can start to move consciously. Um, okay. instead of relying on the subconscious, which is that brain stab and those reflexes. So we do a lot of the background work first. Okay. Um, so once we do all of those things, then we start into the universal exercise unit. So we need to build the strength and the stability in all of those joints before we can really progress into some of those weight-bearing positions, the functional positions. So we can work on core strengthening, we can work on hip strengthening, we can work on knees, shoulders, you know, all of the different pieces. Head control and chin tuck are mm -hmm. some of the most important for postural positioning. Huh. You have that kid that throws their head back as they're trying to get up. It's, That's crazy. It's, yep. It's mostly because <laughs> their core isn't really strong enough um, in order to get them up. So they're going to use the momentum from their head going backward uh, to help it. them get up. Um, it's mm -hmm. a counterbalance. Right. Your head is heavy. If you put it back here, your body has to work much less to get right. you backwards at right. that point. Whereas the proper mechanics are you tuck your chin and you lift yourself up. So working on that head control, working on the core sets them mm. up for, for, better, for better progression, which we are working on, Gracie's right. core. Yes. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> um, so there's all of these fun pieces. And so we use them all in sequential order in order right. to get them ready for the Sarah suit and into those next milestones, those next, um, those next steps in their life. So then, you know, all of that said and done, we're starting to build all of the strength. The TheraSuit comes along, and the TheraSuit is so cool because I can have a kid work out without even them knowing they're working out. Yeah. Um, most of them <laughs> realize that very quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so as soon as you pull it out, they're like, oh, oh. man, um, because they know their body is going to be taxed just based yeah. off of where I put different bungees and, right. and things like that. So. This here is our TheraSuit. Perfect. So it comes in different pieces. So this part up here 
is the top piece. This goes over the shoulders under the armpits. Um, and then this down here is the pelvic piece. Okay. So this goes around, around your waist. So these two are main parts of the TheraSuit. There's also knee braces that we can put on. There's also a head piece that we can put on. So if we're having, we're having the head thrust or we're having right. poor head control, we can actually help them with that head control to retrain some of those proper right. patterns. They hate the head piece, but it's I very know. important. Um, Sounds awful. <laughs> and then we have shoes. We here tend to use And you have is, ones that go on the shins, yep, right? Yep, okay. the knee pads. Oh, that's um, nice. okay. And then here we use what are called the Mimo shoes. They're okay. actually a European company. Um, they come with these really cool insoles. Um, they help keep the foot in the most optimal position, right. um, but it still allows us to see how the foot is moving, which is why we use the sandals. Um, and then we glue this nice, so, yeah. um, beautiful thing around the outside, and it's real fashionable. Um, <laughs> but that it has all these little loops on it, so we can hook all of our hooks onto this, so we can help with toe up, we can help with inversion, eversion, right. internal external rotation, we can work on all of those things just by using these little loops, yeah. which I'll get again to in a minute. But um, so those are the main pieces of the TheraSuit. Um, and then with these, you can see how it has all of these hooks on it. Um, and we use a good majority of these every single time. So there's different primary patterns that we use in the TheraSuit. Um, but again, the fun part about the TheraSuit is it's entirely adaptable. There's 800 hooks, not really, close to, um, it seems. <laughs> um, there's a ton of hooks on here, so you can really move bungees however right. you want. So that brings us to this portion, um, which is our bungees. So these bungees, uh, they come in different resistance. Yeah. Um, so the color tends to match the suit size. Um, and the suits come in small, medium, large, extra large, so we can fit a whole range of body I was size. In one. I yes. was in one to do a little photo shoot. Yeah. It was with Lee, and I was sweating like a pig yes. getting in and out of that suit. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, so the smaller bungees have a little bit less resistance. We usually use those for our smaller kiddos, because. whereas the bigger bungees have more resistance. We use those for bigger, but sometimes we'll kind of mix and match depending on how we want to um, adjust pressure, Makes sense. I guess, yeah. force. Um, so the bungees go on and, and it's all sorts of different patterns. Um, so we do, we bungee a lot on the core. Okay. Um, so we have our anterior pain, our anterior chain, our lateral chains, and our posterior chain. Um, you know, your obliques, your rectus abdominis, your paraspinals back here, amongst many others, but those are the big ones. Um, so depending on the pattern that you put on the bungees, you can either inhibit a muscle group, so we, you can <laughs> fight it so it doesn't work, or we can assist it. So if our core is very weak and, you know, we're having a really hard time in getting it to engage, we'll actually help it along. Interesting. To start. Yes. To start, we'll help it along. So we'll put the bungees on in the pattern that activates the muscles, that Got goes it. along with the pattern that they want to move. So if I want the anterior core working more, I will help that one, and then I will work to inhibit the back. Okay. So we'll fight the, the posterior chain or the extension, and we'll assist the forward flexion. Um, so in doing so, you can have the kid start to mimic the pattern without them having to do the work. Um, so, so they're connecting things in their brain. They're yes. learning this. Their body is their learning body this, is learning this it. pattern, mm -hmm. uh, and it's making it easier. Correct. Okay. Um, and so a lot of our kiddos that have a hard time following directions, um, like, <laughs> you know, it's very difficult to tell a lot of these kiddos, hey, we're going to do 10 sit-ups. Right. Yeah, good luck. Um, no, yeah. you're not. But in the TheraSuit, I can have you doing sit-ups and resisting those sit-ups by having you do all sorts of other activities. You don't even know you're doing sit-ups, right. but that's essentially what we're, we're, we're activating. Um, and so then you know, what are axial loading, we can do along the core, we can do, we can activate our obliques, we can inhibit our obliques, we can do our bungees in all sorts of different ways. Um, so then you, know, you take that same concept and you apply it to all the other muscle groups. Right. So we can do up over the shoulders to help with that shoulder retraction. We can, you know, if they're way back here, we can actually, um, pull them forward, retraction, protraction. Right. Um, or our hips, we can work on a pelvic stabilization. So we can really tighten down that pelvic girdle, which gives them a firm base and much more input. And so that's a big yeah. piece of it too, is this provides the external input into their oh, body. Okay. Okay. So they sense. can now feel their body a bit right. more because they have all of this pressure right. directing their attention to different pieces. Yeah. Um, so that's how we tend to set up the main part of it in the body is the core and the hips. So we really, really hit those ones hard. 
Um, and then you take, um, if we're progressing into like the gait patterns, then we'll put on our knee pads and we'll put on our shoes. And in doing so, now we can do the exact same principle to our quads, to our hamstrings, to our tibialis anterior. We can start to either inhibit the external rotation or we can assist the external rotation. We can start doing all of these fun patterns by putting the bands in different directions. Um, so it really works out quite amazingly um, right. because we can start to train the brain in different patterns. So like I said, we usually start with assisting the motion that we want so that way they understand that, hey, this is the way my body moves the best. And then we start fighting it. So we so fight you... them to the proper pattern so they get stronger into that pattern. Yes, I love um, it. And I, I remember that, yes. the moving of the bungees yep. um, I, as we kind of progress mm -hmm. through. Yep, so we move bungees a lot. Um, you know, as they get used to it, eh, well, it's not quite tight enough, it's not quite doing what we wanted to do, or we want to try a different exercise where I want to now trigger the back, I want to trigger the extensors. So we're going to adjust the bungees um, and put them on in a different pattern yeah. and now do a different exercise. Um, and so we use the TheraSuit in collaboration with some of our more functional exercises. So if we want to work on sitting posture or sitting, we're going to work on sitting on unstable surfaces. We're going to yep. put them in the TheraSuit and start making them sit on foam rollers or the BOSU ball or all sorts of other, all PT sorts of other PT <laughs> devices um, where we can, we have the K-Bench, we have all, all of these other pieces of equipment um, where we can change the pelvic angle, we can really start to challenge their dynamic posture while inhibiting it or while encouraging it or while they have this proprioceptive input to further engage their muscles or their system. I love it. Um, so yeah, so then we, you know, we start, each intensive is really dedicated to pretty much one or two functional milestones. Um, you really can't work on more at a time because the body needs to, needs to learn one or two with as much power as it can right. so that way it builds the foundation. Right, and I feel people that are a good candidate for TheraSuit are in a journey. Yes, um, and know, it is a journey. It's, it's whether it's a traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, CP, whatever, they're in a journey. Mm -hmm. And this is part of that journey. Part of that you journey. you have to take this, you have to use the TheraSuit in that journey. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna correct all the issues in one day. No. Um, and that's why we take that intensive approach. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, and then, so yeah, so then they build on each other. So, you know, this, this session we might be working on crawling. And crawling yeah. takes so much coordination, it takes so much power, but you really need to crawl before you can sit. And you really need to crawl and sit before you can start to stand. And you really need to crawl, sit, stand before you can start to walk. Right. And so there's all of these pieces that are a part of our developmental milestones that really do build on each other. Crawling is such an important skill set. I mean, your vision changes, you get the pressure through your hands, you get the proprioceptive, you start to learn where that body's at in space, you start getting that reciprocal patterning, you start getting that coordination of upper limbs and lower limbs all at the same time. Crawling is so important. For all those people who want to skip crawling, don't. It's very important yeah. <laughs> um, and a developmental milestone. Um, but you need to be able to do all of these things in a sequential order. You can't just come in and be like, you know, your big goal might be, yeah, I want them to walk, but it might be that we need to work on this one first and then this one right. and then this one, and then, you know, we will so, get to it. So let me ask you this. You're talking about the how important the different milestones are. Have you ever had to take somebody back to really solidify and cover a milestone? Yes. Really? What oh, is yes. that like? Um, and, and, like, how far back have you gone? Um, it's hard. Um, it's not fun. The kid... <laughs> The kid knows they can do the next step, so they don't right. really want to go backwards right. um, to work on to work on the first one. But it goes back to all of that reflex integration. Um, I mean, even in the palms of our hands, we have multiple reflexes um, that help give us our body's position in space. Yeah. So when we crawl, we realize that our body is this far away from the ground. We start to gather right. that information on where where our hand is at in relation to the rest of our body. It's a very important reflex to have. A lot of times you'll see kiddos running around hitting things a lot, and it's because they don't know where their hands are at in relation to their body, so they huh. get that input by hitting things a lot. So it, it gives them a better sense of their relation to their environment. So that crawling is very, very important. That hand, that pressure on their hands. We have a couple of kiddos here right now that we are working on that, yeah. that hand reflex. Um, and so taking a kiddo that is ambulatory and then forcing them onto their hands, they don't like it. 
no. because they skipped it for a reason and it's because right. they don't like it. Right. Um, and so we have a lot right now that we are actually working on getting that pressure, getting that weight bearing, getting that upper extremity strength through extended right. pressure weight bearing. Um, so yes, we actually do see that a lot. We do, we do take them back because without getting that input and without stabilizing that shoulder complex, you lose the function of those upper extremities. It's hard to write, it's hard to eat, it's hard to do all of those things right. when you can't stabilize um, those more proximal joints. Awesome. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, anything else to add about the TheraSuit? Um, no, uh, just, you know, keeping in mind that it is, it is a journey. It um, is. It takes most times multiple rounds yep. in order to get to the outcomes that you wanted in the first place. Um, you know, it takes patience, it takes dedication, it takes determination um, yep. from everyone, and it takes a support system. It does. Um, it's not a quick and easy nope. round um, or multiple rounds. Um, and it, it does seem slow at first, and then, you know, those you start to see it, and it starts to click, and yep. it starts to make sense. Um, it I've is, talked to those patients. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to mom mm -hmm. when mom said, I was a little worried at uh -huh. week three, and Alicia is telling me, nope, we're going to get it done. It's going to work. I'm telling you it's going to work. And then week four, it comes out walking. Yes. Like, I love that. Yep. Um, and so, yes, but it takes all of those foundational skills first, and that's where we have to start. So, no, we're not working on walking right away, but we are working on walking Absolutely. right away. Right. Um, so it is a slower process, but it is intensive. It, it does get, it does make the difference. It does really give them a very good outcome. We really can use it for so many diagnoses between traumatic brain injury, cerebral palsy, um, spinal cord injury. We have used it um, yeah. on so many different types of patients. You know, we have to make sure that you're, you're appropriate to be in this. Um, and if you're not really appropriate for the suit, we can still do the intensive. We can right. still do this entire other side of the therapy, give, give that strong dedication to those three hours a day, five days a week, and really make a successful right. impact. And then um, last thing I kind of wanted to talk about, which we touched a little bit when our CP episode, is the cost of intensive physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, when we were paying for therapy, mm -hmm. you know, I was uh, self-employed, so we had a kind of our own crappy insurance, and we were pretty much private paying for all of our therapy. So mm -hmm. 45 minutes or an hour yep. a week, and we were paying, I don't remember how much it was, but mm -hmm. I remember doing the, the numbers back when, and it's really not that much more expensive to do intensive physical therapy right. than what we were paying it just all up front you Correct. know um, and then the other thing that was a big benefit to us uh, and can be for a lot of people is Oxford Kids Foundation correct um, we paid you know between travel therapy food everything because we were relocating up here from Toledo mm -hmm. uh, we spent upwards of fifty thousand dollars you know in 2020 mm -hmm. um, and we were out of money but we needed at least two more rounds of physical mm -hmm. therapy um, intensive Therasuit, and um, Tammy said, Andrew, you need to apply to Oxford Kids Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I did, and they paid for a huge amount Correct. of our burden, you know, to get her for round three, and they paid another amount on round four. Uh, and, you know, she's walking today because not only of the Oxford Center, but Oxford Kids Foundation. Yes, so. we are entirely blessed to have the Oxford Kids Foundation supporting, yep. supporting our kids' therapies here. Right. Um, you know, we have so many donors from the community who yep. are I love yep. our foundation because yep. it gives stories just yep. like that. Um, and it's not entirely monetary based. You know, um, we take each kiddo and, and their family situation into account individually. Yep. Um, it's very cool to be able to provide for these kids that, you know, right. you get that mind altering, that life altering diagnosis and you don't know where to go. And Absolutely. so to have a system supporting you right. is incredible. Yep, where insurance fails, that's where Oxford Kids Foundation steps yes, up. Yes, it is. Awesome. Well, hey, now that we're both crying, <laughs> I think I, I no, I haven't accomplished an episode this year yet without shed a tear. Um, I'm a sympathy crier, so thank you. You're um, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I know we share a lot of the same joys. Um, so thank you for watching uh, this episode of Talk Talks. Um, again, really focusing on Therasuit and intensive physical therapy and the changes it can make you know, in uh, a kiddo's life, in an adult's life, you know, that hasn't had that opportunity to have an intensive approach to their therapy. Um, it will make all the difference in the world, I absolutely assure you. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week.